Gemini, it's me Stormy and here is your horoscope for November 2018 and Gemini, before we jump in, the blog is up at stormygrace.com. I'm so entirely excited about it because this was the expression of Venus retrograde in my third house. I've been working on that blog since January and Venus was like, get your valuable life, young lady. And I did. So the blog is up. I have got the major astrological transits and aspects for so far in November, December, and January, and I'm working them through, but they will be there for 2019. So if there is an aspect you don't hear me talk about, check it out over there. I also tell you how to find it in your own chart. And oh my goodness, if you don't have a chart, please let me get you one or go get it somewhere so that you can follow the conversation, okay? All right, Gemini. So news this month, things are happening, things are moving, your ruling planet is getting ready to go retrograde this month, so prepare for that impact. And it doesn't mean every single Gemini or Gemini rising or Gemini moon sign or wherever your Gemini is at is going to fall apart. That's not what it means, but it does mean prepare for a little bit of review, okay? Now, the other news we've got going on is that Jupiter, after 13 months, is going to move out of Scorpio and into the sign of Sagittarius, lighting up your opposite energy, so you're going to expand and partnerships this year, which is very, very exciting. But my big ticket item that I am so pumped about is that the North Node of Destiny is moving out of Leo and moving to the sign of Cancer. All of those spotlight, big, beautiful things about yourself, these big moments in your life that happened, you're going to nurture them now for the next 18 months. And it's also going to be lighting up for you that second house space. So Gemini, we're getting ready to look at your finances. And here's the thing about the North Node node. And I'll be making a separate video on this, so don't worry about it too much now. But wherever that north node of destiny goes, we will fulfill a destiny there. Not like these other planets where they come through and we could expand in this way. We could whatever. Wherever the north node goes, by the time it leaves, you see that you did do the work. It is probably one of my favorite placements to talk about, okay? Now, because we've got the north node over here in your second house, it means that over here in Capricorn, that south node is going to be helping you release things from that eighth house space along with Saturn helping you to grow up. I've got a whole video that's going to come for you, so don't get too stressed about it yet, but be excited. You have a chance to revalue something, really achieve something around your money and around your self-esteem this year that is incredibly different than what you would normally experience. Oh, I can't. Okay, let's jump and talk about this month. So right at the beginning of the month, we've got that north node of destiny switching on over into the sign of cancer, lighting up your second house space. And this is on the 6th of November. But also on the 6th, we've got Uranus, who's retrograde, moving and shifting back up into the sign of Aries. So lighting up your 11th house. Now, retrograde takes us back, right? It says relook at one of the things I think you got to look at is in this 11th house space, this is friends, this is social things, this is your social media things, this is your long range goals and wishes. You've got to go back and look at the habits and, and beliefs that you have. I think really habits that you have that you've got to break, right? Here's the deal. Uranus has been working on this 11th house space for you for about seven years-ish, okay? And it's going to keep working on it in the sign of Aries until March of 2019. What habits do you need to break as well? You know, how have you improved? How has your friendship zone um, changed? How has your social group changed and is it nourishing you? Whatever it is, use the retrograde to look back, but also use it to, so that you can see what you need to do moving forward. And remember, Uranus is here to break down the things and the structures that aren't working anymore. Aries is about your identity. Do you have some identity, some pride, some ego, some BS that needs to go from your social zone so you can really join, so that you can really achieve your own long-range goals without you being in your own way, right? Oh, love that date. On the 7th, we've got a new moon happening in the sign of Scorpio. This lights up your sixth house space. So a fresh new beginning, new start. At the new moon, we plant those seeds of intention of the things that we want going forward, and then we watch them bloom and develop. In the sixth house space, we're talking about health, and I'm including mental health in that, your mental wellness, right? You are a mental sign. You are a first mental sign. The things that happen to your head, anything about your head, this is a time to be getting new motion forward 
forward with that, right? Healthy, happy. You're definitely in Scorpio intimately. You're going to get to know what's happening in your health zone so that you can move it forward in a healthful way. Also, daily routine, things with co-workers, work. If you're freelance, this could be new work coming your direction. How fab would that be? And I also caution to, not caution, but just explain that if you do have small pets, this is a wonderful new energy because you know what? Some people have pets and those are their primary relationships in their life and that is okay. Love on those fur babies, okay? But this could be a great time for you guys as well. Some of you could even have new pets coming to your house. Now on the 8th, we've got Jupiter moving into Sagittarius, lighting up partnerships for you for the next 13 months. So where Jupiter goes, he wants you to expand, not just expand your thinking and your mental horizons, but expand it out, right? Expand it out into the world. Go out from your safe place and do something. Grow here. So you could have new relationships coming your way. You could have... Um, current relationships in your life and you've got to broaden your perspective and open your mind around some of these relationships so that they can get some depth so you can get some more truth out of them Sagittarius is a truth seeking energy right so that you can see the big picture you are the sign of the smaller mind the details right Sagittarius is the energy of the big picture right so this could be you're just really rethinking some relationships and allowing some more to come to you you will be expanded in relationships by the time we get to December 2019. On the 15th, we've got Mars entering into Pisces. Mars is not comfortable with Pisces energy because he wants to go and move fast and he's ready to do stuff. And Pisces is a very watery energy. So he's trying to sprint in water, right? So if you do water X, you know that's really good for your heart rate, but you're not getting anywhere quickly. So Mars is not very comfortable with that. Now, so what does this mean? This is happening in your 10th house space. So in your career, you could be thinking, okay, I, I, I want a career, I want to offer, and career is also your soul level calling. What do you have to give to the world? What gift are you taking out there? What do you want to be known for? Your status, your reputation, right? But you're not exactly clear on how to get it done or what's the next action to take because sometimes Mars and Pisces, the desire is a little bit clouded. I'm not quite sure of what I want. So you may need to slow down in the career area and allow some things to unfold a lot more slowly so that you can, you know, have the right actions as Mars moves out of Pisces, okay? Mars in Pisces, though he's not comfortable, is not the end of the world for humans. Sometimes we need to slow down because we're missing details because we're moving too quickly. So use it in the positive if you can. On the 16th, we've got Venus coming out of retrograde. Thank you so much. She's going to be direct again in the sign of Libra in your fifth house space. I'm telling you, fifth house things have had some reevaluation. Are you having fun? Where's your creativity? Are you speaking up for yourself? Um, what's your desire to start something new? Now, as Venus comes direct here in this fifth house, you may have negotiations coming to the table. These are, and not just negotiations of business things, but for sure. Um, have you been trying to get pregnant? Maybe there's a renegotiation of the body happening there, right? Things with your children could be moving forward. Um, you're a little bit more willing to have conversation or discuss plans around them, something like that. In your romantic life, you're a lot more negotiable. Things like that could definitely be happening. Either way, Venus being direct is going to bring the value that you discovered from the retrograde forward and meet it with some action so that you can allow that value to play out. I think it's a beautiful energy. On the same day, your ruling planet of Mercury is going to take its retrograde. It's over there in Sagittarius in the seventh house, which is also up there with Jupiter. So at the same time, you've got this expansion of relationships prepared to happen. The first thing you're going to do is look back over the relationships in your life. Look at your part how did you show up in that relationship? Because let me tell you, if there's problems in your life, you have a part in them, right? And we all know that even if your part is just that you are still hanging on to it, right? We can't help everything that happens to us. So you get to go back and look at what are you still hanging on? Go back and look over because Mercury is the planet of the mind. Go back and look over these beautiful people in your life. Have you been around them and you're kind of walking past them? How have you been talking 
to people? How have you been communicating with them? Do you have a head injury? Maybe is it time to revisit if you've got the appropriate strategy to move around the planet and it's the most productive for you. Mercury is savvy. Whether it's forward or backwards, it makes you very observant. So use this retrograde to look back over these relationships and observe what you need so that you can adjust or release on the other side. Keep in mind when Mercury goes retrograde, our cell phones or our devices tend to go a little crazy. We don't advise travel if you can avoid it. And miscommunications are a 100%, right? Because everybody's communicator is turned backwards, so miscommunications are definitely on the agenda. And I tell you what, just because it is your ruling planet, when Venus goes retrograde and it's my ruling planet, I seriously feel like my sexy got completely sucked out of my life. I'm like, what happened? I used to be cute, you know? And so when your ruling planet goes retrograde, it could be a time where you feel like your mojo's a little down and it's okay. If you need to move in a more intentional way this month, just do it. Just do it. Okay, Sun enters into Sagittarius on the 22nd here. Sagittarius house is very busy. We've got the Sun, we've got Jupiter, we've got Mercury up there. So a lot happening, but you're trying to be vital here. That's what the Sun says. So you will be working on relationships. We've got a full moon in your sign on the 23rd. Oh, full moon in your sign. Full moon says something has to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. So you have got a shift coming. The way you present yourself outward, the way that you regard yourself, your external environment, environment, these things are going to have a shift. And whether you just need to change and or acknowledge something about that presence, I want to just remind you, it's okay to show up differently. It is okay to think before you speak. Okay, like it is okay. You are a chattery sign. It is okay to process it through here before it comes out here, okay? So think about the shifts that you'll be ready to make at this particular full moon. And as we end the month, we've got Neptune coming direct in the sign of Pisces in your 10th house. When Neptune is retrograde, things are not always clear. It kind of seems like, okay, well, maybe that's just um, a dream that I have. You know, maybe that's just... You know, maybe it's never going to be this way. Maybe I'm not getting the answers that I want around my career. Maybe a situation feels stuck around my career or my calling. When Neptune comes direct, what seemed like the dream or the disconnect or the holdup becomes reality. Things become a lot more concrete with this particular shift. Now, we've had Neptune in retrograde since June, so think back. Look in your astrology journal that I hope you are keeping and think back what has seemed unclear to you, especially around your career since June, and what are you waiting for some clarity on now that she is gonna be coming um, direct? It's gonna be a good month. Look, I tell you every month it's gonna be a good month because I believe you can go out and take the most positive interpretation of this energy into your life and try and choose a positive direction to work with. It doesn't mean this month, you guys, that some of you based on your charts are not going to have a hard month, that um, Jupiter's not going to expand some of these relationships and there's going to be problems that rise up first. But what I think that astrology is useful for is seeing how you can take a positive, productive route through everything that could be coming this month so that you can be living your best life, right? All right, Geminis, I love you so much. Like this video, comment, share, subscribe, and I will see you next month. Bye.